Due to the COVID-19 Hello nurses and hello top notchers. Welcome again to my YouTube channel. So thank you for uh, subscribing to my channel. So especially mga bago nag-subscribe, maraming maraming salamat po. At sa mga hindi pa po nakakapag-subscribe, paki-click na lang po ang ating subscribe button below. And don't forget to click the bell button for more video updates. Okay, so ang ating pag-usapan po sa ngayon ay about sa ating nursing research, okay? So, ang nursing research ay isa sa mga kinakatakutan na content ng licensure exam kasi isa po ito sa mga pinakamahihirap na tanong na encounter ng mga nurses sa kanilang actual board exam. So, meron po tayo dito ang sampung katanungan about nursing research na pwede natin pag-usapan at pwedeng lumabas sa inyong actual board exam. These are the common board question under your nursing research. So, let's begin with our question number one. Situation, health centers regularly conduct operation timbang to assess the nutritional status of children 0 to 5 years old. Question number one, the nutritional status of children is determined by weight by age. Weight is an example of what level of measurement? A. Ordinal B. Ratio C. Interval or D. Nominal Again, so weight is an example of what level of measurement? So, take note nurses, there are four basic levels of measurement used by statisticians. So, we have your nominal, ordinal, interval, and your ratio. So, pag sinabi po nating nominal, nominal is the other name for category. Or it applies to data with names, labels, and categories. Kasi if we say nominal, the data can only be categorized. Okay, the data can be categorized. Then next, pag sinabi naman po nating ordinal, ordinal, the data here can be categorized and ranked. Okay? And pag sinabi naman po nating interval, interval are the data that can be categorized, rank, and evenly spaced. While your ratio, the data here can be categorized, can be rank, and evenly spaced, and has a natural zero. Okay? So ngayon, ang tinatanong dito is kung saan kabilang yung weight. Okay? So anong level of measurement ang weight? Is it ordinal, ratio, interval, or nominal level of measurement? So, the correct answer here is letter B. Okay, so letter B. So, take note that your height, weight, time, salary, and length, and also the temperature in Kelvin, and also age are the best examples of ratio. Ulitin ko. So, we have your height, weight, time, salary, length, temperature in Kelvin, and age are the best examples of ratio. So, weight is an example of ratio. Okay, so letter B is the correct answer here. Next, question number two. While age is of what level of measurement? A. Ratio B. Interval C. Ordinal or D. Nominal So, saan naman daw kabilang yung age natin? So, kakasabi lang po natin kanina that height, age, weight, and the temperature in Kelvin are examples or the best examples of your ratio level of measurement So, the correct answer here is letter A Ratio pa rin po pagdating kay age so, take note nurses that age is technically and continuous end ratio. So, a person's age does, after all, have a meaningful zero point from birth and is continuous if you measure it precisely enough. So, nag-start po yan sa zero, kaya meron siyang natural number of zero. So, that is ratio. So, letter A is the correct answer. So, kasi pag sinabi natin ratio kanina, ratio is the data that can be categorized, can be ranked, and evenly spaced, and has a natural number of Zero. So, letter A is the correct answer here. So, bukod kay height, age, weight, temperature, and Kelvin, yung years of work experience mo din, yung salary mo din, yung income mo na na-earned last year, and the levels of pain of your patient are examples of your, of your ratio. So, letter A is the correct answer here. Next, question number three. The sex of the children included in his study will be classified as male and female. This measurement is... A. Interval B. Ordinal C. Ratio or D. Nominal So, alin po dito kasi may categorization po naganap May male and female category So, pag may categorization na nagaganap That is an example of your nominal level of measurement Kasi pag sinabi po nating nominal The other name for nominal is category Okay? So, it applies to data like your names, labels, and 
categories. So, pag sinabi natin gender or sex, male or female, that is an example of your nominal level of measurement. So, also with your marital status, kapag single ka ba, married ka ba, widow, okay, so blood type kung A, B, A, B, or O, and demographics. And also with your birthplace, your eye color, your race, political party, these are examples of your nominal level of measurement. So pag may pagpipilian tayong category, that is an example of your nominal again. So pati yung ating mano, uh, car brands, kung anong gusto mong mga, mga brand ng mga sasakyan, ano ba? Yung hair color mo, yung religious preferences mo, and you have also your political orientation and your genotype, okay? So these are examples of your nominal level of Measurement. So, the correct answer here is letter D. Nominal po pagdating kay sex or gender. Male or female, that is your category and that is a nominal level of measurement. Next, question number four. The educational level of the parents is also recorded with the possible choices given as elementary level, elementary graduate, high school level, and high school graduate. The above set of choices is an example of what level of measurement? A. Ratio B. Interval C. Nominal or D. Ordinal So, the correct answer here in your question number 4 is letter D. Okay? So, educational level with the possible values of elementary level, elementary graduate, high school level, high school graduate, undergraduate degree, and graduate degree would be an ordinal variable. Other than educational level, we have also your socio-economic status and satisfaction level, which is an also an ordinal level of measurement. Also with the language ability like the beginner, intermediate, and fluent. And also with the use of your of your Likert type questions, yung may mga very dissatisfied to very satisfied na sagot. Okay? So that is an ordinal level of measurement. Kasi pag sinabi natin ordinal level of measurement, the data here can be categorized and rank. So the correct answer here is letter D. Next, question number 5. The mothers of children are also asked particularly on the child's health history. One of the questions, did your child experience episodes of diarrhea within the last 6 months? If yes, skip item number 4 and item number 5. This question item is referred to as A. Funnel question B. Follow-up question C. Contingency question or D. Filter question Okay, so keyword meron tayo dito Ini-skip na item question So ang tawag po natin dyan kapag meron po tayong ini-skip na item questions ay Filter question So letter D is the correct answer here so, if we say filter questions, filter questions are questions that screens out respondents who are not qualified to answer a second question. A question that determines if a contingency question is asked is called a filter, skip, or branching questions. So, kapag ang question naman ay limited lang sa subset of respondents for whom they are relevant are called contingency questions. So, the correct answer here is letter D. It is an example of your filter question. Next, question number 6. To collect data for her study, Nurse Karil interviews 6 patients who has experienced complication during pregnancy and after delivery. She interviews the patient 2 or 3 times until the point of saturation has been reached. To what does the term saturation in qualitative research refers to? A. Sample size B. Data repetition C. Subject exhaustion or D. Researcher exhaustion Okay? So, alin daw dito? Pag sinabi natin saturation, saturation means data repetition So, letter B is the correct answer here So, in qualitative research, saturation means data repetition So, letter B is the correct answer So, take note nurses, data repetition is the data saturation So, it is a point when data collection can cease it occurs when the information being shared with the researcher becomes repetitive and this redundancy signals to researchers that data collection may cease, okay? So, letter B is the correct answer here. Then, next question number 7. Nurse Catalina plans to use method of data collection that use technical instruments to collect data about the client's physical, chemical, microbiological, and anatomical status. Which of the following is a method appropriate for the study? A. Psychological B. Physiological C. Instrumentation or D. Pharmacological Okay, so keyword in your uh, number 7 is the physical, chemical, microbiological, and anatomical status of your client. 
So the correct answer here in your question number 7 is letter B. It is a physiological method of data collection. So physiological methods are used as technical instrument to collect data about patients' physical, chemical, microbiological, or anatomical status. So letter B is the correct answer here. Okay, so next question number 8. A researcher should pay particular attention in protecting the rights of certain vulnerable groups. Which of the following is not considered vulnerable? Okay, so keyword, not considered as vulnerable. Okay, so ang hinahanap natin dito is a negative answer. So hindi kabilang sa mga vulnerable groups natin. So A, prisoners. B, children. C, mentally challenged person. Or letter D, postpartum mother with normal delivery. So alin po dito ang hindi considered as vulnerable? A, B, C, or D. So, the correct answer here is letter D, a postpartum mother with normal delivery. So, letter D is the correct answer kasi postpartum mother na po siya. So, mas vulnerable po yung pregnant compared sa ating postpartum mother. So, take note that person with diminished autonomy sometimes are regarded as vulnerable. So, such groups may include neonates, children and minors, individuals with cognitive disorders, prisoners, elderly and illiterate English speaking and also with the economically or educationally disadvantaged uh, disadvantage and pregnant women. So, the correct answer here is letter D. Okay, again, so ulitin ko, ang mga groups natin na considered as vulnerable ay yung mga neonates, children and minors, individuals with cognitive disorders, prisoners, elderly, yung mga illiterate sa English speaking, ano pa, economically and educationally disadvantaged and your pregnant mothers. So, the correct answer here is letter D. Next, question number 9. A process in phenomenology where the researcher takes into account his or her own beliefs and feelings and identify which he or she expects to discover and deliberately puts these ideas aside is called A. Recursive abstraction B. Saturation C. Bracketing or D. Coding Okay, so keyword in your question number 9 The researcher takes into account his or her own beliefs and feelings and deliberately puts these ideas aside Okay, so sineset aside niya yung mga opinions and ideas niya and yung beliefs and feelings niya So, anong tawag natin doon? So, the correct answer for question number 9 is letter C, bracketing. It is your bracketing. So, if we say bracketing, bracketing is the process of the researcher identifying and setting aside his or her own biases and any preconceived beliefs and opinions to describe the phenomena in a naive way. So, in descriptive phenomenological inquiries, bracketing is the process of identifying and holding in abeyance any preconceived beliefs and opinions about the phenomena under the study. So, pag sinabi naman po kasi nating recursive abstraction, that is one of the techniques of the qualitative research which is used to analyze the set of data. So, recursive abstraction finalizes and summarizes the data and give a conclusion that is several times summarized from the original data. And pag sinabi naman po natin coding, coding is the process of converting raw information or data into another form for analysis. So the correct answer here is bracketing. So letter C is the correct answer. Then last question number 10. In a study on the relationship between personality makeup and obesity, an coefficient of correlation of 0.8 would mean a. A high negative correlation B. A moderate positive correlation C. A high positive correlation or D. A low positive correlation Okay, so technique in your number 10 Tingnan natin yung ating uh, coefficient correlation So, 0.8 po siya So, wala po tayong nakikita nga uh, negative or positive symbol dyan. So, pag wala kang nakikita negative or positive symbol, that is a positive, okay? Positive correlation po yan. So, ibig sabihin yan, positive 0.8 na po yan. So, a positive 0.8 would mean what? A, B, C, or D. So, take note, nurses, a correlation coefficient refers to a number between negative 1 and positive 1 and states how strong a correlation is. So, if the number is close to positive 1, then there is a positive correlation. But if the number is close to negative 1, then there is a negative correlation. And if the number is close to 0, 0 means variables are not related or uncorrelated po sila. 
So, here in your uh, number 10, the correct answer here is letter C. Kasi yung point 0.8 natin, malapit na po yun sa positive 1. So, that is a positive correlation po yan. Kasi pag sinabi natin positive 1 correlation, that is a perfect positive correlation. Whereas kapag ito ay 0.8, that is a high positive correlation. So, pag hindi mo makita yung word na high, that is also known as the strong positive correlation. The next, kapag ito naman ay positive 0.5, that is a moderate positive correlation and kapag ito ay positive 0.3 that is low positive correlation so below 0.5 that is a low positive correlation na and kapag positive 0.1 that is very low okay very low positive correlation and zero is no correlation then kapag meron ka nakitang symbol na negative negative 0.1 that is the very low negative correlation or the very weak yung low pwedeng gamitin na weak Okay, very low or very weak negative correlation. Then, kapag 0.3, that is low negative correlation or a weak negative correlation. So, take note, lumalabas din po yan sa board exam, yung 0.3. So, tandaan nyo, kapag 0.3 ang nilabas, that is a low negative correlation. And, kapag ito ay 0.5 negative, that is moderate negative correlation. And, kapag negative 0.8, high negative correlation po yan. And, kapag ito naman ay negative 1, that is a perfect negative Correlation. So, in a study on the relationship between personality makeup and obesity, a coefficient correlation of 0.8 would mean letter C, a high positive correlation. So, technique na po yan. So, makikita mo naman, wala naman siyang symbol na negative. So, tatanggalin mo na yung options natin na negative. So, tanggal yung ating letter A. Kasi pag sinabi natin high negative correlation, ang high negative correlation natin ay yung negative 0.8. And yung letter B naman natin, a moderate positive correlation. Ang moderate positive correlation ay 0.5 positive or positive 0.5 or kahit wala yung symbol na positive. Yung letter C naman natin, a high positive correlation that is the positive 0.8 and that is the correct answer. While your letter D, a low positive correlation is the positive 0.3. So the correct answer here is letter C.